right, hi everybody. Are we ready to get started? I know we are expecting a few more people. Hopefully, oop, we just lost Francisco. I'm sure he'll be back in a second. Um, how's everybody doing? Nice to see you. Great. Welcome, welcome. Hiram, I'm gonna spotlight you for everybody. And I oh, wanted- wow. wow, I was not expecting that, Carla. <laughs> um, so I wanted to just uh, port over to you to introduce the foundation and, and then we'll get started. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I wanted to welcome everyone to our first wine tasting, uh, virtual wine tasting. Um, this is the first time we're doing this, uh, but I want to really thank Carla for putting this together for us. Um, for those of you who do not know Carla, she is a bone marrow donor and she came to volunteer with us and she is um, one of our board members for nine years. Uh, she's amazing and very talented. And I always wanted to do something uh, like this with Carla because she does an amazing job. And as you know, we are expanding our mission uh, to remove barriers for patients who need a bone marrow or cord blood transplant through ECLA cares. Uh, but what does that mean? So for the last 30 years, as you know, we have been recruiting donors and finding patients a match. But there are, there are many other uh, barriers to transplant. And also there are many other opportunities that patient uh, can receive a transplant, such as um, a related transplant, a cord blood transplant, a haploidentical transplant. Uh, but one of the barriers is the you know, expenses related to the treatment. So we remove barriers uh, for those patients who meet the guidelines you know, eligibility by providing funding for their transportation, housing, meals, doing treatment. And um, it is amazing to see that in only about six months of ECLA care, we have been providing support for more patients than we did uh, recruiting donors over the per year, recruiting donors for 30 years. Um, because we were saving about 100 patients per year by finding them a match. And we have already provided support for over 56 patients this year uh, by removing those barriers that they encounter during transplant. So I really wanna thank all of you for joining us today, for supporting our cause. And uh, together we'll continue to remove barriers and save lives of uh, patients who are going through a bone marrow transplant. And uh, if you feel that you would love to make an additional donation tonight, you always feel free to send a text message to ECLA Wine to 41444, and we will share that on the chat uh, during the program. So thank you very much for joining us today. Carl, I'll turn it back to you, uh, and I, we're going to have a great time tonight, and I'm really looking forward for the, uh, this amazing program. All right, thank you so much, Iram. It's such a pleasure to be here with you guys. Um, I will just give a small warning that I am hardwired to my internet today and it is not cooperating. So I, I, I think you guys are fine, but I lose you for a second, so hopefully we're fine. Um, my name is Kala. I'm the founder of Five Senses Tastings. Um, I'm so happy to be here with you. As uh, Ira mentioned, I'm a former bone marrow donor and I've been on the board for nine years and um, I'm delighted to be hosting this event uh, to raise funds for an awareness for um, the work that we do with ICLA Cares. Um, so what are we gonna be doing today? We are going on a live Zoom virtual live musical wine tasting with our friends Devin and Francisco here. We'll be traveling with our palates around the Mediterranean. So we're gonna start in France, we'll head over to Italy and then will end in Portugal. Um, and each of our courses, our acts, is inspired by a theme that guides the work that we do at the Icla da Silva Foundation. So those themes um, are diversity, community, and collaboration. Albali, this is your um, Cremant de Limoux. Feel free to open that, pour yourself a glass. Um, we'd love to share, you know, know where you're calling in from, um, what your relationship to Icla da Silva is, uh, you know, who brought you here. Um, and if you have friends, you should get them to make a donation right now, and then someone will text them a link to jump on. How's that for, how's that for cool? Uh, I will drop our menu in the chat and a one-pager when I'm done chatting so you guys can follow along. 
Um, but we're going to start with the Camel. We'll go to the white and finish with the red, obviously. Uh, so each of the delicious wines that you have has been paired with a cheese and two of our Brigadeiro, which are Brazilian sweets in honor of Iram and Ikla and uh, their connection with the Brazilian community. Uh, plus, we have two musical selections um, from Devin and Francisco for each act. So let's get started, right? So we are here in our first act and we're really inspired here by the word diversity. And also, if y'all have any questions, we're like a teeny tiny group. So get off mute, talk, we're family, we're friends, no need to raise your hand. That's such a dumb emoji. No need to raise your hand, just talk, we're all friends here. Um, so we believe that no patient obviously should um, not receive uh, assistance based on their, their ethnic or their socioeconomic status, their ethnic background, socioeconomic status, social status, um, everybody deserves to receive treatment. Uh, we serve patient, patients from all walks of life uh, in the 30 years that we've been ex in existence. 86% um, of our support has been directed to patients of ethnically diverse backgrounds, which is something we're super proud of. Um, that's absolutely amazing. So today we're going to hear a diverse set of musical genres. We're going to hear language, different languages spoken and sung. You're tasting wines from a few different countries, cheeses from a few more, sweets from another one. These are all representative of the, the diversity of, of humans that we touch and humans that we are able to support. So that's really what, what, this, is, um, what this is guided by. Um, yeah, so we're in France. We're in France for our first act. And as we get started, I have three little fun trivia. I used to think that trivia was really silly until I started doing virtual wine tastings and I was like, this is my life. This is life right here. So here is your first little poll question. Everyone can answer, including musicians. So here you go. What are you not allowed to do in France by law? Whoops, sorry. Hold a baguette upside down clearly is one of the options, not part of the question. <laughs> There's some thought going over there in Rebecca and Boris's world. <laughs> All right, awesome. Okay, so uh, yes, the answer is B. So it's totally fine to marry a dead person, like no problems there at all, go for it. I don't know what a baguette looks like upside down, I guess it just means like that, um, but you are not allowed to kiss while a train is in the platform. That is not allowed. And also it was illegal until 2013 for women to wear pants. Not that they didn't do it, but us rule breakers all the time. Um, all right, so now that we know what's legal, uh, let's get into our tasting. So we're starting here with the Grande Cuvée Emery Crémant de Limou. And I'm gonna share my screen so you guys can see where we are. So here we are. You guys see that? Thumbs up. Do you see a map? Yes. Yeah, okay, great. All right, so here we are, and we are in the south of France. We're on the Mediterranean, and we are in the little yellow place here called Limoux. Um, and uh, this is, so Cremant is sparkling wine from France, and um, it's made in the same manner as Champagne. It just can't be called Champagne unless it's made in Champagne, right? So I've heard it said, and I quote, that Cremant might sound like some insanely expensive high-end yogurt made from yoga practicing cows on Gwyneth Paltrow's biodynamic farm, but Cremant just means creamy, right? It means creamy. So the bubbles in Cremant and often in Cava and Prosecco are creamier than those in, in Champagne. They're not quite as sharp. They don't quite hit you in the nose the way those in Champagne do. So let's talk a little bit about how Champagne and Cremant are, worried, are made. And don't worry, we're not gonna get into all sorts of details here, but I get this question a lot. You know, what, how are these bubbly wines made? Um, so the wines are made using this aptly named Méthode Champenoise, Champagne method, which means that the secondary fermentation or the fermentation that creates those bubbles in the bottle happens in the bottle, right? So the wine is fermented in the tank from grapes to wine, and then it's fermented in the bottle to create the bubbles. So if you look at the grape, at the graphic, you have your grapes here, they ferment the wine, it becomes wine, and then they get put in the bottle and they put in tirage, which is a mixture of yeast and um, sugar, and then they bottle it and they riddle it. These are riddling racks. So you might see pictures of people coming in and turning the bottles like every day or something. That's the riddling that you have to do. Um, and then it, it ages for however long, 
Once you're done aging it, you stick the bottleneck up in some ice or something cold, freeze it, and it freezes those lees, that, those yeast particles in the neck of the bottle. And what you can do then is pop them out in what's called disgorgement. And then you fill up the bottle with some wine and some sugar, and that is your sparkling wine. And that's the champagne method. So um, our wine comes from Limu. Um, and Limu is a place that stepped onto the world stage in the, the year that's on your bottle, so 1531. And um, it was uh, thanks to a group of Benedictine nuns from the St. Hilaire Abbey, which you see here, that we have, um, we have Clement de Limu. So does anybody know who the guy on the right is? Famous name. No? All right. It's Dom Perignon. So Dom Perignon was from Champagne. Um, the, we're talking sort of mid 1600s here. And he came from a family of eight children in the Champagne region. And he ended up in Limu at some point. And the, the, the story gets a little bit murky here, but it's generally accepted that he made a pilgrimage to this abbey, um, at which point he learned the methods that the monks had kind of come across. And then he took it back to Champagne. And so everybody thinks that he was like where it all started, but not really quite. So that's kind of the generally accepted story of it all. Uh, so Clément is made all over France, so you can have it in Limoux, you can have it in Jura, in Bourgogne, and wherever. Um, no need to buy Boeuf Clicquot, my friends, Moët Chandon, no need to buy Lamarca. Go and find a little family-run winery that does some uh, Prosecco, some Cava, some Clément in your local wine store. Show some love to those small businesses, um, and Clément is really good value, right? Uh, so let's get into our cheese. We have the Brie du Pommier, which is the soft cheese there. Um, you could try a camembert or some other soft cheese, but to me, bubbles and fat are the perfect marriage. They're the perf perfect diversity, right? Because the, the bubbles um, really complement the fat. The fat bursts through the bubbles, or the other way around. The fat breaks through the bubbles, and that acid in the, in the wine is a really lovely complement to the fat in the cheese. Um, and then we have our sweet treats, our Brigadero. We're starting with the two white ones, so sweet milk and coconut. And Maya Zellman is a good friend of mine now, and she actually, she is of Brazilian origin. She went to Brazil uh, a number of years ago to a wedding, and like all her American friends had these Brigadero, and they were like, oh my God, this is amazing. So she came back to America and started her business. And so she's been an amazing partner to, to us. Um, what do you guys think? Let's get our noses in this. Um, a lot of the things I do with wine are not quite as um, detailed as other psalms will do. Uh, I don't believe there are right answers or wrong answers in wine. Um, but it is fun to kind of just discover in the, in the glass. What do you smell? What do you see? What do you taste? What do you guys get? Those bubbles so lovely and just gentle. Right? They don't like get up your nose. I love it. Lovely acidity, like that your mouth is salivating, right? Which is going to really help with that creamy cheese. Um, I would love to hear what you guys are tasting um, in the chat. Yay, Sonia, I'm so glad. But I wanted to get into our music and introduce our wonderful musicians to you who are going to be um, singing about respect and uh, diversity and things like that. Um, so I am going to introduce Devin, our lovely uh, vocalist here first. Uh, Devin is a good friend of mine. Um, and she is, uh, she was featured on season 10 of American Idol. So you know you're an, you're an idol royalty here. She's based in LA. She's a Philly native. Um, she's a vocalist all over town, session vocalist. She sings in some of the most sought after venues in Los Angeles. She's a songwriter um, and her songs have been featured on TV shows um, in Austria and Japan and South Korea. So um, welcome Devin. Devin has been uh, performing with Five Senses Tasting for quite a while now. And um, normally we'd be performing with bands and instruments, but of course we've gotten super close with our best friend, the backing track. And um, we love the backing track. Um, so our first paired song is a really upbeat, energetic song to get us going. And it's a beautiful metaphor for our theme of diversity. And, and I would add empowerment. Yeah, Rebecca. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this song is actually written by Otis Redding. This is Respect, but we all know it as Aretha Franklin song. Um, and it really became an anthem for integrity, human dignity, right? Equality. Uh, and so, um, you know, about meeting people where they are, regardless of where they come from or their circumstances. Um, in some, you know, that's what we do. And when people are in the hardest days of their life, we meet them where they are and we offer them respect and joy and hope. So uh, 
Here we are. Let's get going with some respect. Welcome, Devin. Oh, hi, everyone. It's so good to be here. And I'm really, really thrilled and honored to be a part of such an important event. So thank you for having me. Kala has become a great friend and I'm really just stoked to be here. So please, without further ado, here is respect respect away um by uh participating in the part we all know best here we go <laughs> myself and then oh i still hear the music my bad <laughs> that's the thing with them backing tracks it's like you can't make eye contact with your musicians and be like i'm done i'm done right hi david hi bridget hi everybody i'm gonna challenge you to put on your cameras and say hi anybody anybody want to do that really love to see your face thank you Devin. um and now i'd like to welcome hi. Go to the hi hi um, oh, hello, little people. Hey, little people. Little people, animals, please bring them all. Please bring them all. Uh, so Francisco is from Ecuador. He is a vocalist, multi-instrumentalist, arranger, music director, and vocal educator for over a decade. He's toured with Bobby McFerrin, performed in Chile at the Viña del Mar International Song Festival, representing Latino immigrants and the U.S. worldwide. <coughs> performance and attracting 60,000 people. What? He dedicates his time to community building musical projects, including the Lincoln Heights Youth Art Center and a place called home. Um, and his first song, it's called Color Esperanza, which means color of hope. Um, and it's a gentle reminder of the fact that hope is what keeps us going, right? In those moments when the, the families we serve don't have it, we're that hope for them. If they can't find it, we can, we can find that for them. Um, and so, you know, I hope that as you hear this um, and you think back on the um, word money, the money, 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 that uh, we just talked about, you might text Ikla Wine to 41444. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we give them that lifeline here to that time after, like the after transplant, right? When they can't see that. Hello, Stephanie. When they can't see that, we offer that hope. 
And so this song is a really beautiful um, song. It's by Diego Torres. And um, welcome, Francisco. Let's, let's have some hope. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Sé que hay en tus ojos con solo mirar Que estás cansado de andar y de andar Y caminar mirando siempre en un lugar Sé que las ventanas se pueden abrir Cambiar el aire depende de ti, te ayudará, vale la pena una vez más saber que se puede, querer que se pueda, quitarse los miedos, sacarlos afuera, pintarse la cara, color esperanza, pintar al futuro. Con el corazón Vamos. Es mejor perderse que nunca embargar Mejor tentarse a dejar de intentar Aunque ya ves que no es tan fácil de empezar Sé que lo imposible se puede lograr Que la tristeza algún día se irá Y así verá Not me, huh? Oh no Something's going on in LA today I'm so sorry La vida cae por fuera, quitarse los miedos, sacarlos afuera, pintarse la cara, color esperanza, tentar al futuro con el corazón, saber que se puede, querer que se pueda, pintarse los miedos, sacarlos afuera, pintarse la cara, color esperanza. Pintar al futuro con el corazón Vale más poder brillar que solo buscar ver el sol Eso Que la conexión se, se fortalezca aún Pintarse la cara, color esperanza, pintar al futuro con el corazón, saber que se puede, querer que se pueda, quitarse los miedos, sacarlos afuera, pintarse la cara, color esperanza, tentar al futuro con el corazón. Esperanza al futuro con el corazón. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you so much. I was taken by so many of those lyrics in there, which are just like so on point for what we do. I put a few of them, what I could sort of translate on the fly in there. The impossible can be done. Sadness will go away one day, right? This is what we do. We help people to, to find that, that way through the impossible. Um, so, you know, if you are just learning about the Eclipse Silva Foundation, please make sure that you are signed up to our newsletter, that you are hanging out with us, you know, on social media at, whatever our handles are, maybe Dyrum can put them in, follow us on Instagram, Facebook. We have an event coming up on June 21st to honor, um, to honor Ecla de Silva. Uh, you know, please keep in touch with us. If you're inspired to make an additional donation of $1.50 or more, that would be great. Just text Ecla Wine to 41444. 
And that's your first act, my friends. How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you liking your wines? I hope you're loving them. So I work with small businesses. I'm a solo solopreneur here. Actually, apparently not. Apparently once you have a team, you're an entrepreneur. I just learned that. Anyway, I'm a sole proprietor of my business here. I'm a certified woman on business. And I work with other uh, women, minority, and family-owned businesses around the country. This is a small business in um, a small importer in uh, Orange County that I work with who's brought these wines to you, and they're fantastic. Uh, and here we are in our second act, and we are traveling to Italy, where I just was, and it was magical. And we are talking here about the idea of community, which is really something we just like cannot not do at Ecla de Selva, and and these these. The, the, the patients that we help cannot get through what they're doing without support and a community behind them. So um, the ECLA Cares program um, helps patients in need because of the incredible large and dedicated community that we have in our volunteers and supporters like you. Um, by the way, again, if you'd like to make another donation, I'm just going to keep saying that. You should just know that and then you should feel guilty. At the, no, I'm kidding. Just, just, you know, support us in any way you can. It's so, so appreciated. We are rely on this community of you, our amazing volunteers and supporters to help from everything from fundraising to administrative tasks. Um, of course, we view our financial supporters as an integral part of the work we do. We can't do it without you. So every donation from $25 to $3,000 to $10,000 um, helps us support patients with critical needs. So, um, you know, thank you so much for being here again. So again, we are here in Italy and you know me, I got my little trivia here for you, you guys. What is the town of Caldari di Ortona known for? I'm very curious what Boris's iPad is going to choose here. Nice. Okay, got a couple other people here. Come on, folks. All right. Anybody for Alessandro? Anybody for Alessandro? Somebody's hopeful for the free wine fountain. Nice. All right. I think we are good because I'm assuming this other two are the are musicians. Um, Y'all hopeful people who chose C, you are correct. There is a free wine fountain. Yes, Lexi. Good job. Um, it delivers red wine all day long. You just go up and put your glass into the fountain. For reals, like, I don't know what happens when it rains. That's a good question. What happens when it rains? Anyway, uh, yeah, so there you go. Goals, hashtag travel goals, right? Uh, all right, so we are in the north of Italy. I'll show you where we are again. Here we are. We're in the north of Italy and we're in, well, the air is a little bit past it, in Piemonte. Uh, Piedmont. Um, and um, Piedmont is known for uh, lots of red wine, lots and lots of red wine. But Arnais is the grape that you're drinking. And Arnais actually happens to be one of the oldest grapes on record in this region. And it's kind of just forgotten. A lot of people don't talk about this white wine a lot. Kind of gets lost in the shuffle, right? Um, but this is a lovely full-bodied white wine. So a lot of the white wines we know from Italy, we know Pinot Grigio, maybe we know if you know um, uh, Fru Fiuli, Fiuli, I can't remember, F I U L I, I think. Um, and they're kind of light-bodied, right? And so this is a, a heavier-bodied wine. If you look at the alcohol in the back, this is 14%, which is pretty high for a white wine that isn't like an oaked, warm climate wine maybe from California, right? So this is still a fairly cooler, cool climate up in the north of Italy and 14%, it's pretty good, right? So we've got a lovely full body um, wine here. For me, I get kind of notes of pears, apricots, stone fruits, um, not hugely aromatic on the, on the nose, but it is an aromatic wine. So you definitely can get something. And remember that your smell is a huge part of your enjoyment of taste, right? I don't know the percentages exactly, but it, it's a, a very large percentage of how much you enjoy your food. And remember that all of your oral cavity has taste buds. It's not just your tongue, right? It's your, your, your soft palate, it's your hard palate, it's your cheeks, it's your, your throat, it's all the way down into your esophagus. So when people, you know, you see wine people swishing wine around, which looks like mouthwash, it actually, I, I had to get into this when I started doing, you know, wine certifications and stuff. It actually does help. It really helps to feel that wine all over your mouth. Um, so uh, the winery itself, Tenuta Carreta, 
is hideous. You should never go there. It does not, definitely doesn't look exactly like this. Um, and it's composed of a group of people who came together in community to achieve a single shared objective, which was to produce high quality wines that taste delicious and create an enjoyable experience for those who drink it. So, you know, a lot of wine is made in community and in cooperatives, and this is such a beautiful representation of, of how we think of our work at Ecla da Silva. Um, let's get our nose in the glass. What do we think? Do we get any other smells that I didn't mention? Maybe some flower, flower notes, possibly some floral notes. What do we get on the palate? This is definitely a wine, mm, lovely acid as well, that you wanna take out of the fridge about 15 to 20 minutes before you wanna drink it, right? Because those floral aromas, that full body, that yumminess, that softness on the palate will really come out. It will be a bit, a bit deadened when it first comes out of the fridge and you wanna be able to let it open up kind of like you'd regularly do with a bread. Do that for your whites, your aromatic whites really benefit from that as well. Um, this next cheese is one of my favorites. It's the Brabander Goat Gouda that's from Holland. Um, it's kind of lighter in color. And a lot of people that I see on my, on my tastings are like, I don't like goat cheese. No, thank you very much. I'm not into goat cheese. I'm like, yeah, you know what? Not all goat cheese is that log you get at Trader Joe's. Like there's more, right? And then they taste this and they're like, okay, fine. I guess I don't hate goat cheese, right? Uh, so this is not your typical goat cheese in any way and hopefully will make you rethink how you feel about it if you're one of those people. Um, so goat's milk is typically not used for producing aged cheeses um, or gavas of any kind. Oh dear, did I lose you guys? I'm going to stop talking for a second. Okay. There we go. Um, but this is made by the premier Gouda mature in the world. Her name is Betty. We love Betty. Betty makes a bomb cheese. You should eat this cheese and everything that she makes. Um, what I love about this, we've got some lovely savory notes and this cheese actually pairs great with almost everything I've ever tried it with. A heavy red, a sparkling, a white. It's just super versatile. So keep this in your cheese repertoire if you like. Uh, and our classic chocolate, uh, classic chocolate is the one with the little square square sprinkles on it and the pistachio obviously the pistachio so those are our brigs and i love the the salt and the and the sweet in that that i really feel like is a nice representation of sort of that community everyone bringing their own particular talents and and uh personalities to to the community right um all right what do we think i really like the cheese i was kind of i really like i mean i love goat cheese i love gouda cheese but when they got married it was really nice isn't it wonderful yeah and and you know i think the the typical suggestion is actually really great is take a sip of your wine take a sip of the cheese and take a sip of the wine again so kind of alternate them um and then i would also say one of our mottos at five senses tastings is try everything with everything so i think the brabander as i said goes well with everything that's not true of all cheeses but try it with the vigna pass try it with the cremant you know try it tomorrow it, it it's just oh i'm so glad you love it it's one of my favorites um all right yeah, the brigadero is really good <laughs> yeah and that, like because the brigadero is a you know for those of you who haven't had it before it's kind of a mixture between like a truffle and a caramel in terms of texture and with the nuts and the saltiness that really creates that wonderful juxtaposition that then with that acid in the wine it's just it's perfect it's perfect all right, are you ready for some more music? In fact, an original song by Miss Devin Rush. Are you ready? Awesome. All right, Devin, you're up, girl. Oh dear, is she here? <laughs> Devin. All right, well, we'll, we'll start with Francisco. No. No. You've lost two? Oh, no. I was gonna say, while she's preparing, what? What makes a full-bodied white wine? Because I've never heard of a white wine described as full-bodied. Yeah, um, so it's the grape and the way that it's made and the alcohol. So typically, like higher alcohol wines will feel a little bit fuller bodied. Um, but it's really the, the type of grape that makes for a, for a fuller bodied white or red. It's not as common. And look, this is not like what a Lodizen is on your palate, right? But in terms of this compared to say a Pinot Grigio or uh, goodness, what's another, you know, a Sauvignon Blanc, right? From, from Marlboro, this has more weight on the palate. It could be because it was gently oaked. 
Um, it might have spent a little bit time, you know, time maybe aging in the bottle, something like that. But it's the winemaker's choice, um, and also uh, the the grape. If it's a later ripening grape, it's probably got more sugar in it and and ripened more, so it has more alcohol. So it's kind of a mixture of what happens in the vineyard and then what the winemaker decides to do with that juice. Yeah, but pretty buttery. I don't know, something with a fruity buttery flavor. Yeah, so if you if you were to compare this with like a Rombauer Chardonnay, you would definitely taste that butter in there, like for absolutely sure. To me, I get just that how it manifests is just like it's softer. It doesn't have that like ooh pucker that sort of the super acidic you know Malbec Sauvignon Blancs or whatever have. Um, but I wouldn't call this super duper full bodied either. You know, medium to medium full. Yeah, good question. All right, Francisco, are you what happened to Devin? I hope she's okay. I right. am here. Excellent. Well, let's offer some heart here. Um, so, ooh, I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> We're going to start with Francisco because he's here. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so this is Yo Vengo a Ofrecer Mi Corazón, which means I come to offer my heart. And this is by Fito Paez. Um, and there's nothing more important uh, in our community, I think, than, than heart. That's what keeps us going, you know, when we're tired at the end of the day and we all work other jobs and we come and, you know, we have a board meeting or we have an event or something. It's, it's heart. It's the heart that we have to keep going and keep working for these patients, these families that, that need us, that can't get through what they're going through without us. Um, so we're all there because we believe it and we believe in it and you know what we do at the foundation literally saves lives like it literally saves lives and it allows hearts to keep beating and it allows people to keep loving and so in honor of that um, here is Fito Paez. Oh no, this is not going well. <laughs> I'm gonna wait another minute. What happened? If you need me to step in, I can. <laughs> All right. Sure. Go ahead. Go ahead, Devin. All right, Francis, we'll get back to you. Um, all right, so uh over to Devin. <laughs> you know, one thing I will say for the for the uh for the pandemic, um, it made us all so flexible, right? It just made us so able to just jump from one thing to the other and people have gained such patience and such wonder at like what we can do with technology so anyway this is slingshot and this is an original song which i just love so devin share with us about your beautiful song please thank you so much okay let me add uh, just also i got that okay great let me take the reverb off my voice so i can <laughs> explain so this is my latest single i've been re i've been releasing pretty much a single a month all all year with the exception of a couple of months um and and we'll continue to do so and so this song is on spotify and all the streaming platforms but this song means a lot to me in particular and i think that it really goes with this event uh the idea of a slingshot um to me is that life works like that that when you feel like you're being pulled back you're just getting ready to fly forward so throughout the song in the lyrics there are a bunch of different references to tension and release catapulting you from from one place to another and it's all the idea that whenever we're struggling with something um we can trust the process and know that we're just getting ready to fly so here is slingshot I know you're feeling kind of sad and lonely And I get it's like you are the only one But baby, you can just release the tension The thing is that you already won You don't even know what's about to happen But it's gonna blow your mind Every failure leads to new beginnings Oh, slingshot, there you go Pulling it back in You don't even know that you're about to fly farther than you've ever flown Oh, 
slingshot, here you are Got yourself higher than your wishing stars Cause you finally understand that's what you are Don't it feel like everything is changing? Can't you feel your life just rearranging? Catapulting you from there to where you're going ha. Something beautiful's about to happen So baby, just open up your mind oh. ha. Cause every failure leads to new beginnings Oh, slingshot, there you go Pulling it back in, you don't even know that you're about to fly farther than you've ever flown Yeah Oh, slingshot, here you are Got yourself higher than your wishing stars Cause you finally understand that's what you are Failure leads to feeling mm. And feeling leads to healing Healing leads to living Yeah Oh, 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 oh. Slingshot, there you go Pulling it back and you don't even know that you're about to fly farther than you've ever flown oh, Slingshot, here you are Got yourself higher than your wishing stars Cause you finally understand that's what you are there you go, pulling it back in You don't even know that you're about to fly farther than you've ever flown Oh, things that here you are Got yourself higher than your wishing stars Cause you finally understand that's what you are Yeah Oh my goodness, that line, uh, feeling leads to healing, healing leads to living. I was like, hello, can that be Ikla's theme song right there? Oh my God. Beautiful, beautiful. So this is what we do. We do musical wine tastings that tell stories. This is not just about, you know, throwing some wine down your gullet and listening to some random songs. This is about actually creating a dialogue and a conversation around what it is that we do at Ikla, what you do in your life, what you do in your business. And, you know, being able to showcase someone's original work is so, so special, too. So thank you, Devin, for your idea to bring this song here. And um, it was so perfect. And that is what we do. We heal. We, we support the healing. We lead to people living and loving. So thank you, Devin. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you, everyone who's donated. So appreciate it. Um, if you're inspired to do something else, um, text the message to three friends right now. Text Ecla Wine to 41444. Text three of your friends and be like, I'm on this really cool event with this amazing organization saving lives. If you want to donate five, ten, twenty-five dollars, I'd really appreciate it. Just a thought. And PS, the text that texting Ecla Wines to to that number is very easy. Just did it and it really works. So Anybody who needs to do that or send that off, that's a really easy thing to do. And I'm adding it to my Instagram stories right now. Thanks, Kala. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, Francisco, um, I'm having the same problems over here in the valley today, like super spotty. I don't know what's going on, but don't worry about it. We're happy to have you. Um, I already introduced your song, so go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And hopefully we don't, we don't get some disconnection here, but here we go. This song is called Yo Vengo a Ofrecer Mi Corazón. I come to offer you my heart by Argentinian composer Fito Paez. ¿Quién dijo que todo está perdido? Yo vengo a ofrecer mi corazón 
tanta sangre que se llevó el río. Yo vengo a ofrecer mi corazón. No será tan fácil, ya sé qué pasa. No será tan simple como pensaba. Como abrir el pecho y sacar el alma. Una cuchillada de amor. Luna de los pobres siempre abierta. Uh, yo vengo a ofrecer mi corazón como un documento inalterable. Oh, oh yo vengo a ofrecer mi corazón y uniré las puntas de un mismo lazo. Y me iré tranquilo, me iré despacio Y te daré todo, y me darás algo Algo que me alivie un poco más Cuando no haya nadie cerca o lejos Yo vengo a ofrecer mi corazón y cuando los satélites no alcancen, oh, yo vengo a ofrecer mi corazón. Y hablo de países y de esperanzas, hablo por la vida, hablo por la nada, hablo de cambiar esta nuestra casa. De cambiarla no más ¿Quién dijo que todo está perdido? Yo vengo a ofrecer mi corazón Thank you. Thank you so much. That's a beautiful song. A really beautiful song. I just tried the salt and pistachio, Lexi, with that wine. That was lovely. Yeah, that was super lovely. I mean, to be honest, I have never, maybe once or twice, but I almost never have a pairing that the Brigadero don't work with. And people will tell you like chocolate and wine don't go together. But those people are crazy, don't listen to them. Um, and that, you know, they're too sweet. Yeah. Okay, they're very sweet, but that salt, I love that salt and the pistachio is so great. Yeah, those people are crazy, Devin, you're so right. Um, also, isn't that sweet? Like it, it, I don't know, it's a good balance. I feel like it would go really, I mean, I ate it already, so it's gone, I wish I had more. But um, I think it would go well, well with probably the next wine we're gonna try also. Yeah, well, hopefully you have one left at least. Um, I mean, we have other ones, the ones that were supposed to be the <laughs> I have. Well, the yeah. cheese is gone for sure. Yeah, know? that uh, goat cheese, that goat gouda, I've got to figure out where to find that. It's actually not that hard to find. If you don't find Brabander, you should still be able to find goat gouda. They have it in Trader Joe's. They have goat gouda. Oh, yeah. It's be the same in, in the ones here. Anyway. Gouda, sorry. Um, <laughs> but um, try Whole Foods or a local cheese shop. Now, yes. Central Market in Texas is yeah, I don't know if been Central Market in Texas, but it's like the Costco of, of shopping. Yeah, and if I read anybody who knows their salt would be like, oh, we don't have the Brabander, but we have whatever else. So, yeah. And I tried to pick cheeses that you'd be able to find, at least if not them, something comparable, and they're pretty easy to find. Um, all right, are we ready to go to Portugal? Yeah. Let's do yeah. it. Portugal. All right. So we're in our final act here, um, and we're concluding with this idea of collaboration. So we currently collaborate with 135 transplant centers around the country who help us identify the needs of the patients and introduce us to patients who need, who need our support. And we also collaborate with you, our supporters. So we wanna hear from you, what's important to you? How can you help us raise more funds? What ideas do you have for how we can engage with our community and get our message to, to a wider audience? Please share in the chat, give us an, you know, info at, at irem at ikla.org, you know, um, 
email us, send us a message on social if you have any ideas or you'd like to host a fundraiser, you'd like to host an event, that would be amazing. Um, if you'd like to make a further donation, equal wine to 41444 um, and text your friends. Okay, that's maybe the last time I'll say that, but maybe not. <laughs> but you've all donated on the call and it's so great. So, so grateful, thank you. Um, so here we are in Portugal and um, very, very uh, quick, quick poll question here. But uh, how many languages uh, is Portuguese, how many countries have Portuguese as the official language of their country? Right. Anybody else? Else? No. Okay. Eh. The answer is nine. I'm so sorry. Yes, I know, Iram. I'm a little disappointed in you. I felt so proud telling Lex there was three. She thought it was only two. So wow. Yeah, I was like, I'm sure there's another one, but I'm aware of just Brazil okay. and Portugal. I don't have my document up to copy and paste, so I'm going to tell you them: Brazil, Cape Verde, Angola. Guinea-Bissau, Mozambique, Principe, Sao Tome, Equatorial Guinea, Portugal. Wow, huh. thank you for that. Yeah, huh. and I Macau. traveling a little bit more. <laughs> that just opened up a whole new world for us. It was really easy to get around Portugal with a swim. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, and then you've also got um, Macau, which is on the east side of China, um, uh, and East Timor and South Asia, they also speak Portuguese. But it's, I guess it's not hmm. Yeah. Hmm. What do I know? Yeah, so Angola, <laughs> Mozambique, definitely. Feel free to send us that document, actually. <laughs> the list. I'll, I'll type it into the chat and, and when, when we start singing here. Um, so another few, few, few fun facts about Portugal. Um, it's the first country to abolish slavery. That's good. We like that. Uh, Lisbon is older than Rome. Love that. Uh, and uh, the rooster, specifically named Barcelos, is the symbol of Portugal. There you go. Now, go amaze your friends. All right, so we are here in Portugal, and um, let me just show you where we are here. All right, so we are just just to kind of south of Vino Verde, which, by the way, guys, region, not a grape. That was one of the things when I first started learning about wine, I was like, really? Okay, I thought it was a grape. It's a region. Um, so here we are in the Dow region. Um, and we're drinking the 2017 Vigna Paz from the Dow region. Um, and this wine is made in the ancestral way where you stomp grapes like I Love Lucy did, which is super fun. Um, and it's a blend of four Portuguese grapes. Um, let's see, I think that was my last slide. Yeah, so uh, it's a blend of four Portuguese grapes. And I like to say the names to show off. What? No, because um, it's fun to know the names. They're like over 3,000, I think, types of grapes in the world that make wine. Um, so we have Turiga Nacional, which is 40% of this in, in this wine. Um, and that's the national grape, obviously, by the name of Portugal. We have Alfrocheiro at 20%, Tinta Roriz, which is also Tempranillo, exactly the same grape, at 20%, and Jaén at 20% as well, which you may know if you're a Spanish wine drinker by its name, Mencilla, same grape. So Jaén and Mencilla, um, uh, Tinta Roriz and Tempranillo, exactly the same grapes. Kind of like Primitive Bones and Vendel, same grape, by the way. Um, it's super impressive, this wine. Um, and Portuguese wines are amazing value, right? You're getting a world-class wine for half the price of what you would pay for a Napa Cab. Get stuck into your Portuguese wines, my friend. Go to your local retailer, tell them you want to try something. They have beautiful whites as well, but for me, the reds shine for sure. Um, and Vino Verde is great. If you want something for summer, it's usually pretty low alcohol, which is really nice. You can get a little bit of sparkling in there, frizzante, which is really nice and refreshing. Um, it's still a somewhat under the radar wine region. So those prices are still going to be your friend, especially when gas costs a million dollars a gallon. Um, so we've got a huge range of exceptional wines across Portugal. So again, next time you need to pick up something for a dinner party, which thank goodness now is mostly possible, go for Portuguese and, and just wow your friends. It's super fun. Um, let's get in this glass. What do we smell? What do we taste? This is a really deep colored wine. You can't see through it at all. It's inky, lots of dark berry fruits, blackberries, brambles, blueberry, cooked fruits. I'm taking a, 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 an advanced sommelier 
uh, certification, so I'm all over my names here, just so you know. Really lovely on the palette, not too tannic, just a little bit, not super full bodied. It doesn't hang out for a ton on the finish, but it's really a beautiful wine. Probably pretty food friendly, actually, for a pretty full bodied wine. Um, this, the cheese that I've paired with it is from Spain. It's called Osao Irati, another one of my favorites. And this you should be able to find. Um, Lexi, if you can't find this, you want to look for, I think it's called, I will have to look for you. It's not Iriasabal. Uh, it might be Iriasabal. But this is from, um, this actually has a, a pretty ancient history to it as well. Um, it's a pasteurized sheep's milk from Onetique. Oh dear, I'm stuck. No, I'm back. Uh, which is located in at the foot of the Pyrenees Mountains um, in the Basque country. So the Basque cheese is like the Basque country has a very wonderful food uh, culture and the cheeses are amazing. So if you can't find this, just be like, give me anything from the Basque country. Um, and uh, yeah, so these these cheeses are made with using traditional methods going back thousands of years, right? Handed down by ancestors and it uses the milk from these these very specific sheep. Kind of like Manchego is made only from milk from sheep, this very specific group of sheep from La Mancha. Um, so what I love about this cheese is it has this really complex kind of hazelnutty flavor. It's got a bit of caramel as it matures on it. Um, again, a super duper versatile cheese, probably not kind of on the Cremant type of level, but with any red wine um, other than your super duper duper light wines, I would absolutely recommend this cheese. And it's one of our like top ones that people just love. So have this around. And then we have the two final. Do you like that? Yeah. I mean, just like you were saying, like a nutty, sweet, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if you like that nutty, that sweetness, I would re definitely recommend an aged gouda, even just a yeah. gouda, like a, a bean stir or something like that, which has that butterscotch kind of um, caramel toffee kind of butter, not butterfinger, butter. Yeah. The butterscotch, right? So bean stir is available at Costco. Usually the aged gouda is available at Trader Joe's. They're pretty easily available. So love those aged ones. And then our, our two final breaks, the rainbow, because I wanted some happy rainbow colors. And it's Pride Month in collaboration. And then the coffee dark chocolate. And the coffee dark chocolate for me is the winner for this pairing. Um, it's really pretty subtly flavored with the coffee, but there's something about it that really brings out those rich flavors and brings out that coffee, that cocoa, that um, that that smoke almost in the in the wine a little bit. What do you guys think? Oh, the nose on this wine is lovely. It's so interesting, you know, sometimes you'll get your nose in a wine and then you'll drink it and it'll taste totally different. And you'll be like, wait, I think it, you know, I, those don't taste or smell the same. They seem like they would be different wines. I think that's really fascinating. Not that that's here, but. The wine definitely enhances the Brigadeo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that coffee kicks in at the end if you keep it yeah. time. Yeah, and if you ever taste that sort of coffee, cacao, smoke in your wine, that's an indication that it's been aged in oak, right? So probably pretty age worthy. Maybe it could age even a little bit more. I think this could probably keep aging for a couple of years in the bottle and it would be great. All right, so let's get into some music. We are here, we're talking about collaboration and um, I'm gonna welcome Francisco to the stage uh, for Al Otro Lado del Rio, which means on the other side of the river. And this is a really poignant message just to remind us that there is hope again on the other side of the pain that we see in our patients' eyes and their, in their hearts, right? Um, there's a brighter future on the other side of the hospital visits and the doctor's appointments and the, the blood transfusions and the pain pills and all that. So by collaborating with blood centers, by collaborating with you, by, by bringing your friends into this partnership, into this community, into this diverse community of collaborators, look how I did that, um, you are able to help carry our patients in need across that river and into a brighter future, which is from pain into hope, from illness into wellness. Um, so I'd like to welcome Francisco back again to take us to the other side of the river. Um, this is a song by Jorge Drexler. Welcome back. And is there anything else that you wanted to share about this song? I know you you shared your songs with me, so this must have spoken to you in some way. Please share um, anything that you would like to about the song, if you'd like. Yes, 
This is one of my favorite songs. This is actually a, a song that Jorge Drexler composed for the movie Diaries, uh, Diaries of uh, Motorcycles, um, El Diario de Motocicleta. And, uh, and it was the first Uruguayan uh, composer that won a, a, an Oscar. Uh, and this song was actually performed uh, at the Oscars. I believe it was 2000, uh, I want to say 2007 or six. And, uh, and it was Antonio Banderas and uh, Carlos Santana who performed this song for him. Because apparently the Academy was not very poignant on having him perform his own song because he wasn't really famous. Uh, which is really interesting because when he won the Oscar, he went uh, up there and he just sang. He sang his song and he got the opportunity to sing his song. Um, it's a beautiful song. And if you uh, love his poetry and, and kind of the, the play on words, uh, you'll really love his music. So uh, Jorge Drexler is his name. And this is a beautiful song called Al Otro Lado del Rio. Llevo mi remo en el agua, llevo tu remo en el mío, creo que he visto una luz al otro lado del río. El día le irá pudiendo poco a poco el frío. Creo que he visto una luz al otro lado del río. Sobre todo creo que no todo está perdido. Tanta lágrima, tanta lágrima y yo soy un vaso vacío. Oigo una voz que me llama, casi un suspiro, rema, 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 rema. En esta orilla del mundo, lo que no expresa es baldío. Creo que he visto una luz al otro lado del río. Yo muy serio voy remando, muy adentro y sonrío. Creo que he visto una luz al otro lado del río. Sobre todo creo que no todo está perdido. Tanta lágrima, tanta lágrima y yo soy un vaso vacío. Oigo una voz que me llama, casi un suspiro. Rema, rema, rema. Rema, rema, rema. Clavo mi remo en el agua, llevo tu remo en el mío. Creo que he visto una luz al otro lado del río. Wow. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing that story. You know, there's there's so much that we can learn from and, and connects us just by knowing what inspired the the, uh, the composer to write this song. Or, I didn't know that, Francisco. Thank you so much. And, and um, how poignant that he got up there and was like, all right, y'all didn't want to hear me before. Um, I'm gonna sing anyway. I love that. That is so empowering and such a beautiful song. And I love it. It was just like, keep rowing, keep rowing. Just stick your, your oar in the water, keep going, keep going. And that's what we do. 
at the Igla da Silva Foundation, we just keep going, we keep rowing, we keep rowing um, to, to try and save more lives. That's really beautiful. Thank you very much. I don't know if you guys are feeling it, but I'm starting to feel like, I was like, don't cry. You gotta lead this. Don't cry, don't cry. It's beautiful. All right, so we'll, uh, we have one final song here, my friends, um, and this is Look for the Silver Lining by Chet Baker. We'll welcome Devin back here. Um, so uh, this song was written in 1919 for a, a musical you've never heard called Zip Goes a Million. I mean, maybe you've heard of it. I haven't. Who's heard of that? Devin hasn't, right? And this is actually a really common theme for a lot of the songs that we love as they were written for musicals in the very early 19th century, uh, 20th century for musicals in the 1910s, 1920s, and for a lot of musicals that just kind of never made it. But there was a song that, that, uh, that someone picked up on and, and made it a jazz standard, and this is one of them. So uh, Judy Garland covered this, we love that. Um, and really this is the message that I want to leave you with, which is there is always a silver lining. It, doesn't seem that way sometimes in today's world where things are really hard and every day we face challenges, whether it's at the gas pump, in our jobs, in our home lives, in our health journeys. It's really hard right now looking at the news in the world. And it's moments like these where we get to see the future, you know, sitting on Lexi's lap and we get to see the, the hope that we have and the, the support, the community that we give to people who need us. That is what keeps us going and what is that silver lining. So that light at the end of the tunnel, it's there. Keep searching for it. Keep looking for that silver lining. Um, and uh, oh, hi, Andy. Hi. Yay, you came for the most emotional part. Good job. <laughs> hi. Um, all right, Devin. So uh, this is Look for the Silver Lining by Chet Baker. So I would just invite you all to, you know, think about the concept of hope, think about what we do, and if you're inspired to get in touch with us in any way, whether it's financially, logistically, by hosting an event, just by showing your support on social media, we're so, so grateful. We are saving lives and we're doing that with your help. So um, keep looking for that silver lining and uh, we'll close you out. Go ahead, Devin, thank you. Thank you. Look for the silver lining Whenever a cloud appears in the blue Remember somewhere the sun is shining And so the right thing to do is make it shine for you A heart full of joy and gladness will always banish sadness and strife so always look for that silver lining and try to find the sunny side of life and strive so always look for the silver lining and try to find the sunny side of life or oh, just find that sunny side find that sunny side find the sunny side Just always look for that silver lining Try to find the sunny side of life That sunny side of life Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Thank you, Devin. That really was just the message that 
to close out this event, isn't it? Just keep looking for that sunny side of life. Um, keep looking for that silver lining. Keep looking for that light at the end of the tunnel. So grateful that you joined us. Thank you, Francisco. Thank you, Devin, for lending your artistry and your professionalism and your beauty and your creativity. We are all working musicians, working small business owners here in Los Angeles, just by chance. Um, but, you know, show your love to the musicians in your life, the small businesses in your life. And um, thank you so much for being here. Your presence, just your presence is so, so important for our mission. Um, and I've, I've shared some links in the chat, so you can make sure to follow Devin, Francisco, follow us. If there's anything that we can do to bring your story to life, please let us know, but we're so grateful for you. Um, thank you, and we just leave you with the idea that beauty is not a luxury. Beauty is in each one of us, and it is our, our great privilege and our responsibility to bring that beauty into the lives of others. So um, thank you for being here. Iram, Brett, is there anything you wanted to close out with here? No, we definitely wanted to thank you, Kali. You were amazing. You always do have such a fantastic job. And the musicians as well, Devin and Francisco. This was beautiful. And everyone who attended, Sonia, Bridget, Stephanie, Brad, and Andy, you know, thank you for being here with us. Um, all those that sign up and did not, was not able to come, you know, I'm sure that we'll be able to share this with them. But thank you for your support once again. And I, I, I think it was amazing. We had a great time. Wonderful. Well, thank you all so much. Uh, I think this is the first. I don't know that I've ever had a New York City cab in one of my. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I always love a first. Um, <laughs> thank you, everyone. Um, I hope you're well. Thank you for being with us and being a friend of the Eclipse Silva Foundation. We really treasure your your friendship and your support. Thank you, Devin, Francisco. I'm Kala, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Kala. Okay. Uh, every time I attend one of your events, I just think, why don't I do this every week? <laughs> <laughs> well, Carla, you can tell about your club, right? Um, well, yes, so I'm just going to stop. <laughs>